the love of Christ may I touch upon, but it is unsearchable. Oh, there is none its large dimensions can comprehend. Should they try, they would find a world without end. When we had sinned in his zeal did he swear, that upon his back our sins he would bear. And since unto sin is entailed death, he vowed for our sins he would lose his breath. He did not only say, vow or resolve, but to astonishment did so involve himself in man's distress and misery. As for, and with him, both to live and to die. To his eternal fame, in sacred story, we find that he did lay aside his glory, stepped from the throne of highest dignity, became poor man, did in a manger lie, was reliant on others for bread, had not of his own anywhere to lay his head, though rich he did for us become poor, that he might make us rich for evermore. Nor was this the least of what he did, but the outside of what he suffered. God made his blessed son under the law, under the curse, which like the lion's paw did rip and tear his soul for mankind's sin, more than if we for it in hell had been. His cries, his tears, his bloody agony, the nature of his death does testify. He did not in constraint himself give for sin to death that man might with him live. He did do what he did most willingly. He sung and gave God thanks that he must die. But the kings die for captive slaves? Yet we were such when Christ died to save us. Yes, when he made himself a sacrifice, it was that he might save his enemies. And though he was provoked to retract his resolves for such so good an act by the abusive offences of those that did both him, his love and grace oppose, yet he was not concerned with such things. No, he goes on and determines to make captives kings. In fact, many of his murderers he takes into his favour and them princes makes.